Joining me here in Studio A to talk a little bit about his job at San Juan Regional Medical Center now that he has a year and a little bit, few months under his belt. Jason Rounds is back with me uh, this morning. Welcome back to KSJE. Mr. Rounds, good to have you here. Thank you for having me this morning, Scott. You bet, you bet. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you've got about a year and six months under your under your belt, and so how are things, how are things going? Um, really well. It, it's amazing. Uh, time flies, so it seems like I just got here yesterday, and uh, somehow it seems like I've been here forever at the same right. time. Got you. Um, but you've settled in, and your family has settled in, Absolutely. and uh, and you've kind of seen the ins and outs of the hospital. And, of course, whenever we talk about health care, that is a constantly changing and evolving topic. And so um, how San Juan Regional fits into that evolving topic is certainly a uh, cause for discussion as well. So that's another reason why I wanted to bring you in and, and talk with you this morning. Absolutely. Um, some other things the hospital is doing, of course, it is flu season, and so you've got some flu shot clinics planned, as you always do. The hospital always does every fall. Absolutely. And thanks for bringing that up, Scott. So um, Saturday, October 26th and Saturday, November 2nd, uh, we're going to offer our, our drive uh, through flu shot clinic, uh, as we've done in previous years. It's going to be in our parking lot uh, at the corner of Maple and Schwartz. It's free of charge, as always, to adults 18 and over. And so it's going to be first come, first served until the vaccines are exhausted. So okay. we're happy to provide that to our community as part of our support. Very good. And and they're pretty quick about that. You roll down, roll up your sleeve, roll down your window, and boom, boom, you're we, pretty much done. We try to make it an efficient operation. Yeah, very much so. So that's good to know. And, again, I, I think uh, it's always important for folks to, uh, to get a flu shot. But we always say if you're concerned, talk to your medical provider about any vaccination that you want to take or any inoculation you want to get and uh, they can answer your questions 100 percent we're we're great advocates for the flu vaccine uh in addition to if you are um in the categories of of uh, 65 or old, older or uh, diabetic or have other complicated uh immune systems uh flu shot and the co the new covid uh vaccine uh are great to get uh make sure that you keep you safe and your family safe over the over the winter right very true and the local pharmacies i guess will be handing out uh, or giving out the covid um updates to this fall is that that's, the idea so that's correct so our yeah. local pharmacies are getting uh the new um uh, booster that's in it's updated for the new variants that are out there um there are two that are currently out the pfizer and the moderna and i think there's one other that will be coming out slightly different formulation um later in the year okay all right very good um other topic i want to ask you about that we were talking about before we came on the air this morning involves finances and some legislation i guess that was passed um recently that that should be helpful to san Juan regional medical center and again our hospital is somewhat unique in that it is a community hospital nonprofit hospital um that supports the the community but it's maybe a little different than other hospitals folks may be familiar with or or hear about on the news let's say no 100 percent. so uh albuquerque journal recently published an article uh about the healthcare delivery and access act so this was a bipartisan uh approach to help um, really provide a sustainable financing method for all of the hospitals in the state of new mexico uh, large and small large, large and, small. and small rural urban uh the likewise okay now, the the rural hospitals tend to benefit uh, to a greater proportion, um, but everyone is kind of a winner in this scenario. So what it really does, uh, the state law um, will assess a tax, and I hate to call it a tax because this was really voluntarily and done in collaboration with the, the state hospitals uh, to come up with these funds um, that will provide for a federal match. So for every dollar that the state pools, it can bring down up to $3.72 of federal funding. And those funds are going to be distributed back uh, to the hospital systems for the care of their patients. Okay, seems like a good deal if I was paying a dollar and getting more than three dollars back. Absolutely, and so this was a um, this was a legislation that was currently available. These were dollars that were simply just not being drawn down by the state that were already eligible to. Okay, that. so in total, we're uh, the state's going to draw down about another one point five billion dollars uh, to support the healthcare needs uh, of our citizens. It's formulaic, so it's based on the number of Medicaid patients uh, that are out there. There are quality metrics that a hospital can't just doesn't get this pool of funds uh, without having to hit certain quality uh, standards. Standards right, okay. uh, that will go through that, and the rural hospitals uh, are going to benefit uh, disproportionately better than perhaps the, the urban hospitals, and it kind of is graduated uh, up there. For example. Um, um, the rural hospitals, on average, are uh, contributing or being assessed about 19% of the funds, and they're getting a return of about 40%. 
Okay. And so, and it graduates uh, up there. So the urban hospitals, the large systems are getting a little bit less. And we're somewhere in the middle. So for our community, it's going to be um, a tremendous benefit. Uh, we've been out uh, beating the bushes, so to speak, telling people that this is coming, uh, the magnitude of what the impact is going to be over the upcoming years, what we're going to have to do with it, and really challenging our uh, board of directors in our community to really kind of get together and uh, take a look at our strategic plan and what we need to do for the next five or ten years uh, to make sure we're making the most of it. Got you. And, and I know funding is always a, a, a topic of discussion for your board and for you, um, and sustainable funding certainly as, as well, because again, as a community hospital, your mission is not to turn anyone away from care. If someone shows up on your doorstep, you're going to take care of them no matter what needs to be, to be done if they have insurance or no insurance or no money or, or what have you. And that falls, I guess, back on the hospital and also the county to fund some of that indig indigenous care. Um, but, but again, it's one of those ideas that no one should be turned away from getting health care. Great. So, we, yeah, absolutely. We take um, our, um, we're sole community provider currently, and we take that role very seriously. And if you look at what's available around us is we're, we're kind of the only game in town, so to speak, for um, a vast area. So we are pleased that we provide certain services, um, I, like it, uh, we punch above our weight, so to speak. Um, we have three um, neurosurgeons, for example, uh, that right. can provide uh, trauma care. We have a rated uh, level three trauma center to take care of those types of accidents. Um, we have a flight service um, that flies into the four state area, uh, transporting patients uh, to our facility and on those other occasions where higher level of service is needed uh, out of our facility as well. Right. So it's and that's not cheap, pardon me for saying, but uh, you know, to have any kind of air service is pretty, uh, pretty expensive commitment. Absolutely. So, but it's uh, something that we're proud to do uh, in service of our community. Um, and we have one of the busiest uh, emergency air transport services in the country. So our, our planes and our helicopters are, uh, 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 not, not sitting in the hangar, so to speak. No, no, true. They're, you're getting your uh, your money's worth, I would think. And I know, you know, a lot of folks, um, when the idea of a helicopter uh, ambulance was first proposed, were talking about, you know, getting patients to the emergency department or to hospital within that golden hour or whatever the case may be, right, to start getting that care. And because we're such a rural area and cover the hospital covers such a vast part of geography, you know, getting that that patient back through the air quicker than on a road ambulance or you know driving uh, is certainly really important for the outcome of their of their care is what I'm trying to say. One, Not uh, in a very clear way, but you know what I'm trying no, to no, say. No, 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 absolutely. That golden hour is actually paramount and one of the the key reasons of why we have such a, um, a well orchestrated uh, ambulance service and air transport service. They work in concert with each other and so there's always good communication between what is the best option uh, for uh, that patient in whatever circumstance they're facing. Right. And for the community, I think to understand too the, the basics of the of the hospital, being a nonprofit community hospital, which is somewhat different than, again, I think a lot of the other hospitals that we're seeing, maybe around the country, maybe around the state, if you will, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's unique in that, you know, you're not in, in the business to make a lot of money. You certainly want to pay your bills and pay your staff and keep the lights on and things like that. But really, that's about it. Is it? Is it not? And have some money for reinvestment, I guess, too. Well, uh, you, you've hit the the key point here. So we are a private, not for profit, five hundred one c three organization. There is still some confusion, even within our community, that we're a a county hospital, um, and that's uh, uh, just not the case. So we. Um, earn our money, we are invested uh, locally, uh, that um, investments go back into the community, uh, support that, and if there are uh, margins, so revenue above expenses, uh, that money is, is invested back into the community. It's one of our uh, missions um, uh, for our organization to make sure that we're supporting the community appropriately. But we, we have the same business pressures that a lot of the private companies do. So if we are not earning our keep, so to speak, we, we are having those those same pressures. There's not a, a big brother, so to speak, that's going to come in and necessarily ba bail us out. So right. it's something that we're very proud of. Sure. Well, and again, a recruitment is always something that is uh, top of mind, I know, getting quality doctors here and, and staffing nurses and, and all the other folks that go along with with that we saw it during COVID, of course but again you mentioned the neurosurgeons that you have on mm -hmm. staff i know that the hospital spent a lot of money on on um, heart care and cardiac care and things along that line as as well and there's other areas i know that i'm i'm forgetting but you're going right. to tell us about um but, but all that has been a big investment too to kind of be that center of care for this whole region correct 
So over the last years, um, we have been investing um, in technology, um, in our workforce development. Interestingly, the, the healthcare delivery and access that is going to help us do that even better. The, the whole point of that is to really provide uh, additional funding to help uh, bring more providers and caregivers uh, to New Mexico and certainly to the Farmington area. So with that better funding, uh, we'll be able to, to recruit. I'm, I'm knocking on wood because as we're really seeing a number of physicians and advanced practice providers leaving the state, so it, there is a net uh, negative outflow than inflow. Uh, over the last year, we have been successful uh, in recruiting some really top-notch uh, providers to our community. So before July, I'm trying to get the numbers right, I think we had recruited 26 uh, new advanced practice providers and doctors to our community. And since July, we have uh, over 22 committed now that will be coming on over the next year. So key specialties that we've struggled with uh, to recruit, like OB, we've got two new providers that have signed on. We've recently just um, signed on two G new GI doctors who are gonna be providing hospitalists uh, specific care for us, uh, some of these high-level specialists, as well as primary care and the whole contingent. So we have about 38 uh, positions that we're actively recruiting for now in advanced practice providers and physicians, um, as well as um, um, a large need for caregivers, uh, from nurses through techs to rad techs to, to the whole thing. And we have some really innovative approaches, especially using this, some of this new money from the Healthcare uh, Delivery and Access Act, um, to invest in the community, we're working in partnership with uh, San Juan College right now. Very good. Um, they've made a commitment to increase their nursing class by, um, uh, I think they have two enrollments per year. Uh, they're increasing that number by 16 each time. So just looking for creative ways in those partnerships that we can invest in our workforce in this community. Right. Increasing that, that pipeline, I guess, right, from the college to San Juan Regional with these graduates, with these folks that are learning the skills that, that you need to have. 100%. So there is there is an undersupply of caregivers across the country. So this right. is not unique to us. So really um, focusing on um, investing in the front end to make sure that we're uh, getting the people who are going to be taking care of all of us as we get older. Uh, in the mix. So if we were just counting on trying to find e enough experienced providers who want to, uh, caregivers who want to provide these services, there's just not enough out there. So we want to make sure that we're investing in the future. Got you. And you mentioned that this is a, an issue that's happening not just across the state, but across the country. Is it a is it a salary issue? Is it a benefits issue? Or is it just a person, not enough people issue? Do, do we know? It, it really feels like it's a not enough people issue. And once again, uh, there's lots of contributing forces in that. Is, is the compensation right? What's the market doing? Are there enough people uh, out there? What are the motivations uh, to do that? But uh, I recently uh, came from Arkansas, so I was with uh, the UAMS system there, and they right. have two nursing schools. But really working with um, those leaders as well, there was an initial kind of disconnect over the the nature of the problem and trying to uh, get enough uh, folks in the shoot to be able to provide that. So I think um, all over the country, my, my counterparts in markets that look like ours are doing what we're doing. They're working with local um, uh, education systems uh, to uh, uh, increase the, the reserve of folks that are available to come out there. So we're, we're happy that the we've had such a positive response from our friends at San Juan College. Very good. Well, it's been a long-standing partnership, I know, between the hospital and the and the college, and it, it looks like it's it's growing, and uh, and it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Absolutely. Uh, over 50 years, uh, a relationship. So How about that? Yeah. Very good. That predates both of us. I know. Right? So there, <laughs> there you are. Very good. Uh, well, Mr. Rez, I want to ask you, too, a little bit about um, another um, health care facility that is being constructed um, not too far from where we're sitting right now, um, and, and and they're calling themselves a community hospital, and, and some folks are saying, well, that may be a concern for, for San Juan, or what does that mean for San Juan Regional? Uh, what's, your, what's your idea, or what's your reaction to that new facility coming online, I guess maybe sometime next year, perhaps? Sure. Well, um, you know, basically my philosophy is, is competition is good. Um, um, we've been here as a sole community provider for a long time, so it uh, allows us to really kind of look at our delivery models, our systems, and what we're doing. A little bit differently and kind of brush off the cobweb, so to speak. Um, but as a community hospital, um, if, if I, I would really encourage the listeners to go out and, and kind of research. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a venture capital group uh, out of Dallas. Uh, they have uh, systems or uh, facilities that look like this in Arizona and Texas and some other states. 
Um, so it, it's unique, not quite unique, but almost unique in New Mexico. I think there's one other system uh, in Albuquerque that looks like them, uh, Albuquerque ED. I think they're building a second location. Um, but they're really focused on a very narrow uh, set of, of care. Um, not going to be a, a cookie cutter of what San Juan Regional does. Not at all. So they're going to have, uh, I think, uh, once again, they don't invite me to their, their planning session. So right. forgive me if I don't get it quite right. But I believe they're going to have about 11 bay ED with a number of uh, hospital beds uh, that I think they'll use largely as an overnight observation uh, opportunity for their patients. Um, so they'll have an emergency department with a few beds associated with that and then some other maybe observation rooms for, for patients. Correct. So, yeah, But uh, less than 25 or so, right? Or well, less than 50, I would think. Yeah, oh, ab no, absolutely. Not the, not the number of beds that you have, which is in the... 18 or 19 beds is, I think, what they have published. Okay. And once again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm quoting sure. uh, unknowledgeable on that one. Right. But compared to what, what San Juan Regional offers, you have how many beds at San Juan we're, Regional uh, Medical Center? 198 beds. Okay. Um, we're really kind of focused on that critical care uh, medicine aspect of it as we're shifting uh, we've got a, additional licensed critical care beds really looking at the future and what is uh, needed in this community um, and we're also you know with with the need for health care in this community it, it's hard to begrudge any new providers that are moving in here so we're really looking uh, to partner with them where it makes sense in a lot of cases uh, by their own uh, conversations with us they expect about a third of the patients that are seen there are going to have to get higher level care someplace else. So in our partnership with the county, we run the ambulance service. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were staffed appropriately to be able to do that. So we've add, uh, added another crew and um, another um, ambulance uh, to be able to support that. So if they're sending, as an example, 20 patients out of their system, either to our uh, hospital, which we're happy to take those patients mm -hmm. when uh, needed, uh, or out of the community, we want to make sure that we have the resources available to be able to do that. Got you. And so you imagine that you will be a referral from for them, for their for their patients that need that higher level of, of care than what they're able to provide. Correct. They, um, as I understand it, they will not be doing procedures. So if you need an appendectomy, for example, and they determine that uh, you'll be transferred um, to another facility, we, we would like to be that facility. We want to make sure that we're keeping um, our community and our patients uh, local. Right. Um, if you have a heart attack and they determine that you're having a heart attack, you'll be trans, uh, transferred immediately to us uh, to access our cath lab capabilities and uh, the like. If you're having a stroke, for example, you'll be uh, transferred to our facility. So those higher level needs, uh, we want to make sure that we are supportive of um, and to keep our patients local. Got it. Very good. And uh, and again, that is uh, currently under construction. I don't think I've seen a, an opening date yet, but uh, I know you're preparing for that, obviously, like a lot of other folks probably are, too. Absolutely. So um, they are uh, scheduled to open in June, the last I heard. That was at the, at the grand opening, and so that's uh, what we're planning for. We're anticipating in our facility about a 20% drop in our ED volume. Uh, once again, it'll be kind of a probably a focused clientele that's uh, navigating up there. And uh, like I said, we want to make sure that we remain um, a viable option if they need higher level of care and they can uh, come back to us and get that. Uh, right. In, Understood. In our, in our normal San Juan way. Right. You um, mentioned some new doctors that are coming in. Is there any concern about maybe a competition with this new facility, maybe with your doctors or, or trying to cherry pick some of the staff that's already here to work for them? Um, workforce is always a concern. Uh, I think our primary concern um, is uh, with our caregivers. So it is so difficult to recruit to this community right now those uh, well-trained, highly uh, competent, experienced uh, caregivers who are providing that service. So the ED is one of the, the critical areas for us. We're going to be um, we're going to be recruiting from the same pool. Um, and we're certainly uh, concerned about if they're going to be able to draw out of our own hospital system. So we're, we're paying close gotcha. attention to that. Okay. Is there such a thing as non-competes in the medical uh, field for your staff and things like that when you sign somebody on? Well, if, um, actually, there's, there's lots of new legislation that's out there that's really limiting uh, the ability for non-competes uh, to be effective. And it's something that we traditionally really haven't uh, focused on. We really feel that, that people should have the right uh, to work where they feel is the, the best opportunity for them. We just want to make sure that they always think that, that we're that best opportunity. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Appreciate the, uh, the comments on that, and, uh, and we'll see what happens, I guess, as we go closer to, uh, to next summer. Yep. Um, again, um, the medical uh, and the healthcare industry always seems to be evolving, as I mentioned, and we have the Affordable Care Act, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's no um, question that a lot of people that didn't have healthcare or, or opportunities to access healthcare before the Affordable 
Affordable Care Act now do. Some folks still don't like it. Some folks do like it. That's a political thing that we won't, we won't get into on this program. But um, the, the idea of access to health care has got to be really important. And for folks to be able to maybe take more control of their health and to be able to manage their health has got to be a good thing. I mean, you see people at the hospital when maybe they're at their worst and they've got a lot of things going on that are wrong that need to be fixed or hopefully to get to get fixed and if you can do more preventative care that's got to be a good thing for the public what Absolutely. a long question that was i'm Absolutely. sorry about that oh my yes. gosh i don't even know where to uh, start on that <laughs> feel one. free anywhere anywhere but as we're um, as we're updating our strategic plan uh, one of the key elements that we're going to be talking about with our board in the community is is access to uh, primary care and what that may mean in the future is uh, I just came back from a, a conference with my uh, board members, and AI was a hot topic. Oh, so sure. The ability of, of how that can support you and what it can do or can't do. And you've got Amazon that's tiptoeing into primary care. I've got friends who, who use that system. We've got our own telemedicine program that we uh, use uh, in partnership at San Juan County to supplement our uh, primary care that's available in this community. So I think there's there's so much innovation um, within that that realm that it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next you know five to ten years uh, with respect to that. But we remain um, um, emphatic that it's a continuum. So we want to be able to be part of it at the the primary level of care all the way through the the critical needs into long term care and otherwise. So really looking at the needs of our community. Uh, and our patients and making sure that we're investing appropriately of, of, of keeping our, our folks close to home. Gotcha. And I know um, the hospital has invested in a lot of new technologies, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, kind of virtual um, health care and mm -hmm. things like that and, and being able to see someone maybe virtually. Um, robotic surgeries yep. are now taking place at uh, Sam Regional Medical Center on a fairly regular basis, I understand. Absolutely. Um, the demand for our robot, uh, which was our first one, um, has really already out, outstripped its capacity. Really? So so we're really looking at that, but um, it's been a critical game changer for our uh, metabolic and bariatric program in managing uh, weight loss. And so uh, we're doing uh, those procedures robotically. Um, but it's really amazing, you know, I'm, I'm showing, I'm long in the tooth these days, but you know, when it first came out, it was really kind of narrowly focused around maybe your urological procedures or the like, but uh, general heart, um, bariatric, uh, the, the whole range of it, um, it's really quite amazing what you can do with it. And the differences being, I guess, I'm sorry to interrupt you, oh, but no, just no. the differences of having a robotic assistant, it's not the robot actually doing the surgery, it's still guided by a surgeon, um, but it's the preciseness, I guess, of some of the things that, that, the, that the minute uh, instruments can can do maybe a little bit better than a surgeon can do well um it's just um it's that that resolution in there and so once you develop those uh capabilities and those techniques um it really is a less invasive procedure i see um to be able to do some of this so the recovery tends to be quicker mm -hmm. uh, you're, so you're not in the hospital as long if if it's an uh, uh inpatient procedure uh, or recovery times if it's an outpatient p uh, procedure are, are better so but the surgeons are looking at a screen and, and seeing this very, very up close um, image of what's going on, and the, and the robotic uh, equipment, I guess, is is doing the work that's guided by the surgeon. It correct, um, and, and, and I think that's an oversimplification of it. Well, because it's it's leave uh, it to the media. No, no, I mean, but it, that that's really it. It yeah. really is. Uh, it's an amazing uh, procedure to watch. Uh, certainly right. beyond <laughs> my my understanding and capabilities, but um, it's something that we're ha uh, proud to uh, bring here. The other thing, um, and this kills a, a CEO because we like the, the shiny robots and the new things that we can point at and, and see, uh, we're also making substantive investment in the stuff you can't see. So okay. our IT technology. So we've done a s tremendous upgrade with our uh, servers and switches and all of that. Uh, some of the software systems we're looking uh, carefully at uh, and how we're going to invest in the future. This stuff is really expensive and it's really important. Uh, and it's going to make the difference on um, how patients access care in the future. And so we want to make sure that we have an absolutely strong foundation uh, in that. We're also taking a close look at our um, facility. Um, we have an older part of the hospital that needs um, some uh, love and attention, so to speak. So we're looking at kind of um, upgrading um, you know, the electrical switches, sure. the plumbing inside of it, the roofs. Uh, the stuff like that to make sure that we're going to be turning over this facility in great shape to the next generation of leaders um, um, that come after us. Right. 
Right. Very good. That's really important as well. And I know, um, you know, the hospital's been very um, progressive, I think, in uh, in energy. Um, you've got a solar field, yep. I think, not too far from yeah. the hospital, right, that provides some energy to um, the hospital, maybe helps in term, in times of uh, interruptions with the utilities and things like that? It, it, it was a good start. So mm-hmm. we're providing about 35% of our daily energy needs. Um, we have uh, do not have the um, capability of storing that power. Gotcha. So from um, a contingency standpoint, it can help if our power went out, but usually if the sun is is shining. Right. So, but that's part of our, our long term kind of mitigation strategies. And in is that working? Do we make additional investments in it? What other uh, type of technologies do we need to uh, have? But we've had such great support from the city um, on that, as well as our other partners. Um, that um, our key needs right now are, are focusing kind of on on those infrastructure is some new switches, making sure our um, uh, our light bulbs and our electrical systems are the most energy efficient. We're right. having great impact with that. Gotcha. I can't imagine what your utility, utility bill is every every month. I don't they, even want to they, know. They don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> they, they, very good. Under, understood. But uh, it's a big facility, one of the major employers of, uh, of San Juan County and certainly an economic driver in San Juan County. And that's been some of the things that my guests about economic development have mm-hmm. talked about is being that kind of that location for medical services and things like that, which I think has been part of the reason for your investments in some of these things is to attract patients for care who maybe live outside of this community but know that they can get quality care for unique services here and not have to travel to someplace even further away. 100%. Um, So we really want to focus on what uh, can be done uh, safely and well in our community, and that's part of our strategic uh, planning process. I'm also, I'm so excited to be part of um, the Four Corners Economic Development right. Group. I'm on the board of directors now. Um, but I think where I'm excited is healthcare right now, I mean, if you look at just the boomers, the demand for healthcare over the next 20 years, um, we're kind of in um, a high dem- demand uh, opportunity for that. So healthcare is going to predictably, from a market standpoint, be a relatively stable, um, uh, recession resistant industry. Um, we've got things like the HDAA um, that's going to help us with some funding over the next few years. So it's a prime time. You have a you have a foundation pillar that's a relatively stable economic driver in a community like Farmington that will help not only attract businesses because we are a uh, comprehensive healthcare system, but also we're recruiting 38 uh, physicians and advanced practice providers. We have about 160 other well-paid positions that we're recruiting for uh, aggressively. So those same drivers to invest in broadband, to invest in housing markets, to find those opportunities to attract people here, then to leverage that diversified economy. Uh, I think it's a unique opportunity for us. Right. Well, and a lot of work to recruit some retirees here, too, which is those are those boomers you're talking about, I think, right? That uh, may need your services. No, it, it's inevitable. So really excited about the development out uh, uh, in um, uh, San Juan uh, Country, Country Club, Club area. Yeah. Uh, so that's exciting. But uh, healthcare is going to be such a foundational part of that. If we did not have a robust healthcare system in there, it would be difficult to re- uh, recruit and retain those retirees for our community, make sure that we could take great care of them. Right, right, very true. Another thing that the hospital is a leader in, I think, too, that uh, is unique in the area is the cancer center, uh, and, and, and those aren't cheap either, um, to make sure that those uh, that equipment is up to date and, and you're looking at the latest and, and, and newest technology, and again, to treat uh, cancers and things like that. I think a lot of folks are surprised that a community of our size has a cancer center and can offer that to patients from the region. Uh, again, that is something else at the hospital I know is very proud of. Uh, absolutely. And thanks for bringing that up, Scott. Um, as we've recently done our um, community needs assessment, we do it every three, uh, three years as a not-for-profit. One of the key areas that we uh, recognize that we should be investing more in is oncology care. So in partnership and how we would do that. We have a phenomenal um, radiation uh, therapy program. A great doctor, Dr. Fuller, who's joined us recently. Uh, the advanced technology and a wonderful environment uh, to receive that care. Uh, we work uh, very well with our uh, independent group of medical oncologists that are in this community. But if we really look at the needs um, surrounding our community, uh, we need to do more. So one of the, the projects that we'll be talking about at our upcoming st- uh, strategy session is uh, what type of investment and what do we want cancer care to look like for our community in the future. So 
it's something that I'm super excited about. I think it's something uh, that could um, uh, really be a cornerstone of, of what we invest in going forward. Gotcha. Well, sounds like we're going to have to have you back. Mr. Rounds to talk about that. And so, <laughs> and again, uh, I think we can all agree that thanks to the community for another successful uh, cancer walkathon yep. that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so um, congratulations on that. I know that money stays local, which a lot of folks uh, like and support the Conley Hospitality House, which is certainly connected to the Cancer Center. No, wonderful program, wonderful organization. Thanks to Audra Winters for coordinating that. It's been, uh, it was an amazing um, um, uh, event. Very true. Very true. Jason Rounds, we're out of time. I'm sorry to say, but I appreciate you coming and it's always great to catch up with you, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. That's Jason Brown, CEO, San Juan Regional Medical Center, my guest here on KSJE.